Hey guys, um, Ninth Wonder is in the building, which means Zulu Nation is in the building. Of course. Introduce the squad you brought with you. Jamla's a squad, man. Two. Jamla Famla? The J- no, no. Don't do that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. See, that's why I asked you to do it. That's exactly why I asked you to do it. <laughs> Jamla, would you like me to get a history on the name Jamla first? Would that work for you? Sure. Jamla. 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 Okay. okay. Jamla is a um, is a take from Tamla, which is a division of Motown. I was going to say that. Let's I was going to say, has that anything to the do with epic, Tamla? The epic Marvin Gaye uh, starred exactly. uh, division of Motown. Named exactly. after his daughter? After uh, is named after. Uh, are you making uh, that up? Or are you no, asking Barry Gordy's daughter? Right, right. Named after Barry Gordy's so daughter, Tammy right. or whatever her name was. And so that's that's why I took it from because because it was created because they was given another side of what Motown was. You know what I mean? So that's Jamla. Over here we have uh, my man Ad Two from Chicago represents Chicago. Ad Two, Ad Two, and over here we have Rhapsody from North Carolina. Get close to the microphone, Rhapsody. What's up, Peter? Hey, how are you, Rhapsody? Good, I'm good. God, I've known you for a long time now. Very long. It's weird. Oh, that, <laughs> that what? southern accent's going to throw me off. Turn you on. Yeah. You're a little turned on now. Yeah. I hear what you're saying. Like my twang. Oh. Oh, God. Oh, Nelly. Oh, oh Nelly now. <laughs> London London and southern. I just <laughs> throws me off. Um, by the time this hits the uh, the computers and uh, iTunes stream, the album will be out. The Jamla album will be out. What is the name of the compilation, Ninth Wonder? Uh, name of the compilation is Jamla's the Squad. Jamla's the Squad is the name of the compilation. Hosted by Static Selector. So it's a it's a mixtape compilation. Right, right. Why, why is he call, if you're going to call a white guy to host, why, why is it going to be Static Selector and not me? I don't know, man. Are you a DJ? You are a DJ, aren't you? Damn, I feel some type of way. <laughs> I feel some type of way. Hey, listen. I'm sure you've known Static Select as least as long as you've known me. Oh, no, no. Definitely not. That's definitely, definitely not, not Definitely case. not. Definitely not. Yeah. It's not like, yeah. I mean, oh, well, he was probably featured on an early Little Brother album. No, no, no. no, no I was. was it right? You're right. You're it was right. me that was featured on the Little Brother album. Mm. Right. I got a check from Atlantic Records for $500 for that feature. Did you? I did. Which I, which I believe oh, is more good. than you guys made on that album combined. We missing $500. Exactly. <laughs> Real quick, who's, who else is featured on this? And who is Jamla in total? In total? Yes. Uh, Jamla is a Rhapsody Add to a GQ from Oakland. Um, Big Remo from my hometown, Winston Salem. Mm-hmm. TP from my hometown, Winston Salem. Actual Proof, a two man team, Enigma and Sundown from um, Raleigh, which you play some of the music for. Mm-hmm. Um, Heather Victoria, the songstress Heather Victoria, and from Wilson, North Carolina, and Hollow, which is from originally from New York City, who lives in North Carolina now. It's a lot of North Khaki Lackey. Right. And uh, like the la- label manager is uh, Sean Boog of the Away Team. That Sean you know. Boog's from the Away Team, right? Wow. Exactly. And I have a, a production team called the Soul Council, and that's myself, E. Jones, uh, Eric G, Cash, Amp. Oh, so now Rice that you're is, a big Hollywood uh, producer, they the ghost team. produce and you take the credit. I see. No, I've seen yeah, that's it. Yeah, I've seen yeah, it before. You're right, you're right on. Yeah. Yeah, I know how it right works. On. I know how it works. Right now, on. Fonte is not a part of this. No, he's you know, he's, he's featured. He's, right, he's featured on the um, compilation. So is Big Pooh, also featured on the uh, compilation. Not together though. No. Are they still no bueno? You gotta ask them. I'm, I'm good with everybody. So that means, see how I got my answer question? No, nah, I just don't, you know. You don't, don't speak on it. His eyes, eyes. I don't speak on it. His eyes, eyes said it all. Yeah. It's called, it's called. I didn't even know that was an issue and I already saw it. It's called media training. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. Um, also currently these days, you are a Harvard professor. Yes, sir. Never, also, also never, That's never, crazy. never got an invite up to the class. And Duke uh, University too. I well, believe I, would, I did. He wouldn't no. go to Duke. Duke, I wouldn't go to. I would if I went there. You know what I would do? What you do? I would take a shit in the middle of the room. Really? You'd bring a guest down, and they would be like, "Oh my God, there's a man shit." I, I don't want. I don't want to tell what I do at the University of Maryland, but it doesn't you, matter because they're you. not in the Big Ten. No, no, we're not in the ACC anyway. We will be in the Big Ten. It's, it's pointless. With the ugly uh, we're about to play our last uniform. game against each other soon. Yes, we don't care. We. You didn't go to Duke. I'm an employee of Duke University. <laughs> as well. What, we're, we're, do you have more allegiance to Duke than Harvard? I do. Because it's hometown? Yeah. And it's my favorite basketball team and I have a relationship with the basketball root? team. They're so white and nerdy. How can you root That's for That's why them? he got static selected. Actually, 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 it's not. Duke is 45% minority. That is a lie. No, it's not. It's true. You are a... No, it's true. Italians. It's true. Trouble Jews. Yeah. You are, are a minority. You it's are true. a bald or bold, I don't know which it is, <laughs> face it's liar. It's true, man. It's 45% minority, man. Are you man. serious? Yes. Well, can they allow some of those people to go to the basketball games? Because I swear I only see white yeah. people in the crowd. No, that's not necessarily true. <laughs> if you want to see a lot of white people in the crowd, look at the University of North Carolina's crowd. Oh, see, this is it's classic. I mean, like, you know what I mean? Like North Carolina and Duke people. I've done end. my research. I've done my research. You're saying that they have you? You saying Duke has a higher minority percentage than North Carolina? Yes. Really? Yes. 
North Carolina University. All right, yes. See, Sife didn't. How should I say? Sife didn't go to college. I went to college. <sighs> Junior's college. For a second. A junior college. Community college. Even it's not worse. junior I mean, college. That's less than junior college. <laughs> now, granted, Sife did. A year did, and a half, man. A year and a half. A year and a half. Now, listen, Sife did. Pat, Sife passed up a full ride to NYU. Wow. Why'd you do that, Sife? Sife, what'd you get on your SAT again? 1540. 1540 on his SAT. No, I fucked up. I fucked up. He went nerd. to a year and a half, and yet he went to a year and a half. You're a nerd, Sife? Community college. I am. That's right. I am. Uh, yeah, and I went to Nassau Community College <laughs> for studio engineering. Well, it paid off. Look at that. Look at you now. 15, Look 15 what now? 1540. 1540. Wow. I didn't know. I would have. I should have went to NYU. Ask around your Duke classes. See how many. You won't see many 1540s. You'll see a couple. Not a whole well, lot. It's a trick, though. That you did. You. is easy, man. You just got to know the trick. You got to know the pattern. He's trying to downplay his nerdiness. I know. He's trying to downplay it. Just read, that's read, you got to know, man. Five percent of us will teach you how to pass an SAT, man. This is true. All trick That's where you learn. This is it. very true. Yeah. You are an active member in the Zulu Nation. I am. Oh, you're real Zulu Nation. He's yes, real. I am. Official tissue. Official wow. tissue. Ours, this is, sounds so stupid. It's embarrassing. Even Can you me. tell me what the what they're saying in that record? What Zulu. Zulu. Stoppo. Gestapo. Yes. It is Gestapo. Gestapo. I thought it was that, and then I was like, wait, that's some weird Nazi thing. Gestapo. You mean Zulu. Gestapo. Gestapo. Zulu. That's what it is? Gestapo. Yes. But in my head, I was, here, I don't know what it was in my, as a child, you know what it was Grand in my Master head? Grandmaster Flash Party. At, in my head, it was Scooby-Doo, <laughs> that style is old. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was in my head growing up. I always thought it was Zulu. Gaspacho, <laughs> like some kind of like Italian dish. Like they were talking about a delicious. You food. were closer to him. Wait, yeah. It's really Gestapo. What, why Maryland. do they that's, say that? That's they do so teach in Maryland, man. We didn't know. So okay, real quick, uh, relationship between Five Percenter Nation and Zulu Nation. Uh, not much. Are not Zulus, that I know. Can Zulus be Five Percenters? The Zulu can be anything. You can be yeah. Jewish and be a uh, universal. So what? What does Zulu Nation really mean? Uh, Zulu Nation, universe Zulu Nation is peace, unity, having fun. It was started by Africa about about in That part I know. Three. Okay. You are you are know that. That part, part I know. Okay. Uh, we were created. It came from of, the. We created out of the Black Spades, um, and uh, in the Bronx, New York, changing oh. all the Black Spades gang members into hip hoppers. My mom, hip-hoppers. My mom hip-hoppers. used to whip your mo- girls' asses. Really, when she was a savage. Black skull. Spades. Oh yeah. She took- Sifes, What was her position? Warlord of the Savage Sife's Skulls. Sife's mother was Warlord of the Savage Skulls. Wow. Just wow. saying, they got it in. Just wow. back in the day, it wasn't peace. It wasn't peace. It wasn't peace at all. <laughs> right. No, but right. then Africa Ben was sick of that. Changed it to Zulu Nation. So it basically took a gang and made it hip hop. Right. Well, and you punk. made it, you know, at the time, it wasn't MCs at the time. It was just DJs and graph writers and, and B Boys and B Girls. And, and the majority of the B Boys and B Girls was Latino. Really? Yes. So that's how it started. And then what does it mean now? I know you guys are having, in the midst of a bit of a resurgence, right. things have been getting reorganized, sort of, and refocused. Right. Well, it's just trying to uh, gain some type of cultural foundation to, you know, hip-hop doesn't have really an organization outside of corporate that is as a a cultural foundation to What about Karis? You know what a temple of hip-hop. <laughs> <laughs> this, yo, bro. <laughs> This dude, you know I mean? go down there. What's going on down there later on today? I oh, forget. Okay, so that's so that's what we're doing, and and you know, there's been uh, several resurgences in in, in Zulu. The first one was when you know Q-Tip, a tribe, and Conquest, and Brand New being everybody. So early nineties, early 90s. twenty years in it, had right? And which got us into it. You know what I mean? Right. We heard it the first time on Planet Rock. If you would, if you didn't live here. And then we heard it again through them. And so now it's happening again, but now it's through myself. Zulu Nation. <laughs> through um, myself, um, Sean Price, uh, Be Real from Cypress Hill. Really? Rocker from Dilated Peoples, yeah. What? And Rhapsody, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Right. You drafted her in. I'm in there. Right. Would you so. have to, did they make you do anything to get in this group? I mean, you know, there's a process for us. We can't really talk about that process. But there is a process. There's, there's a process. process. Really? Yes. Do you have a good collection of classic 90s Africa medallions? I do not. Because Bambada no. used to wear like 70 at once. He one still time. wears them. Like, he still all, wears all, them. He's around. Yeah. I, have, I, have a, I actually have a, a Zulu medallion that was passed down from like 80, 1981. Wow, really? King to king, yeah. Wow. What's your relationship like with Bambada? Um, it's not that a big of a relationship. I have a more relationship with uh, uh, King Mark Love from the West Coast. Uh, Ahmad Henderson that lives here in the Bronx, uh, uh, Queen Unique that lives here in the Bronx, uh, Lord Yoda that lives here in the Bronx. So I have more relationship with them than I actually do with Africa. But you've Bambada. met Bambada, yeah, 
mm-hmm. several times. Yes. What's he like? Quiet, man. You know, from what I, he doesn't talk much. I guess he doesn't need to talk much. You know what I mean? Like, he's just very reserved and very quiet and kind of sits back and watches everything. You know what I mean? I know a bit of your story, but for the people who don't, where does the uh, Ninth Wonder hip hop journey begin? It starts in uh, at, in Durham, North Carolina, at North Carolina Central. With uh, well, actually, it starts at NC State where I made my first beat, nineteen ninety eight, and then I went to uh, Central at went well, back to Central. My grades were good, and uh, and I met uh, Fonte holding uh, he was holding a Source magazine, holding my Source magazine, uh, let him hold, and and we shared a common interest in music. And it just went from there. Uh, and he was playing football at the time. And he like Monte Coleman. Yeah, he played football. Played football. Fullback. Wow, really? Yeah, man. And I know. That. And, and like he doesn't even like sports now, which is crazy. I know. He I've hates, never. I've never. You and I hate sports, man. Yeah, like me and Pooh would talk sports, and but you nah, and he would never say a word. Yeah, like if I say Rajon Rondo, he would like, yeah, that's the guy who played for. What do you play for? So like, you know who Rajon like Rondo that. is? Mm. The Celtics. All right. <laughs> You're not a sports dude, man? Uh, okay. That was pretty good. I never heard his first name before, and you were talking about football, so I'm like, oh, this might be. Yeah, yeah, I'll try it. I'll try it. <laughs> totally unrelated, but related. I was watching this interview I did with Action Bronson. I'm editing for a project, and at one point, he's telling a story about when he broke his leg. And he goes, you know, he uses like crazy descriptors all the time. And he's talking about the doctors and how much he, how he almost punched one of the doctors in the face when they were resetting his leg. And he's like, the one doctor. He looked like Rajon Rondo in the face. <laughs> he's so crazy. And he really used that in regular conversation. And then he's like, I grabbed him by the throat. I spit in the other doctor's face. I'm like, we can't use this in the interview anymore. This is crazy town. <laughs> well, they were trying to fix his leg. It really hurt. He'd broken his fibula. Anyways, so he played football at the time. Right. And you guys connect over some hip-hop-ish. Right. And just like, just because like I love like music before that. Always, but you just made a beat, and when you got to college, well, I was I was in the band, and see, I was band geek, dude. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? In sixth grade, seventh grade, all the way up to tenth level. What instruments? Um, I played seven. Um, all forms of clarinet, like three form, two form saxophone, uh, French horn, uh, trombone, percussion. Jeez, you know what a, a trombone player and a dog have in common? Tell me, they're both not on their way to a gig. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it, man. Oh, that's a good line. Who's who's, who's that's a band joke? Oh, yeah, where you get that from, man? I don't know. It's like where a old, get, where you get that band like joke old from? Frank Sinatra style joke, like yeah, it's one of those awesome. dudes. <laughs> Sorry, so that's just so, all good. That's where I get it from, man. You know, just the music history. And but then sim- simultaneously, I met Big Pooh, you know, in the calf one day, just talking, and you know, he said, man, "I need a ride up the hill because you know you got to go up the hill." To our dorm, you see, I need to ride up the hill, man. It just went from there, and that started like '98. But then it didn't go on until 2001. that we became little brother, and then it popped off pretty quick, right? Yeah, it, you know, a lot of the new artists, Kendrick, Michael Moore, Mac Miller, um, um, everybody credits us for being Drake. the Drake. one. Drake credits us for being the one that popped up from the internet because that was kind of unheard of before you know what I mean some people would say Slum Village but Slum Village was right before that they were like in the hip hop site sandbox automatic days as opposed God, great reference point yeah, you're right. exactly right you know what I mean but we were the okay, okay player we were the first message board you guys were the babies of okay player right Tay Gravy was ringing off on them message boards right exactly. we would all have like big chat Back and forth, back and forth right. on these message boards, yeah. And so that's well, how, how we did you pop off from the internet, though. Just you know, w- first we were against it. We were against putting music on the internet because we didn't know what to expect until uh, we put two songs up from the internet, and then it got like which songs post, you put up first? A uh, speed and whatever you say, and uh, from the listening. And how did you? How did you? How did you even upload it? Right? Yeah, like what do you mean? Was it an MP3? It was uploaded by a, a guy uh, by the name of uh, Brainchild, mm-hmm. DJ Brainchild. I remember him. Uh, and he had a site called thejohn.com, mm-hmm. and he linked that site to a OK Player post, and he said, it's a little brother, uh, grew from North Carolina, kind of sound like Slum Village, check him out, tell me what you think. So that was that night, and the next morning, it had like 300 replies. Oh, this is great, Bob. And it just started from there. You know what I mean? So a lot of fucking nerds were on the internet at that uh, time. Man. So I, I don't you know, but it, but also at the same time, um the, our music got to Quest Love. And it, if you know anything about Quest Love, he he goes from 
person to person, like you gotta listen to this, you gotta listen to this, you gotta listen to this. So, so I started getting these phantom calls from Evil D and Mr. Walt and DJ Spinner and Groove Attack in Germany and Music Soul Child. And I'm like, where y'all coming All from? All from Quest Love becoming a fan. Yeah, he's a just nerd. just passing music from hand to hand like that. So with that and the internet, it just kind of started to spread. 